Howdy y'all. Back for another story time. I'm so glad you've decided to join me. And we're going to have another Hans Christian Andersen tale. This one is titled, The Naughty Boy. <laughs> Speaking of naughty boys, I have a, a little naughty boy right here. Maybe we can get through this story without a catastrophe. Maybe go play you. All right. The Naughty Boy by Hans Christian Andersen. Read to you by myself, Tennille Milam. The Naughty Boy. A long time ago, there lived an old poet, a thoroughly kind old poet. As he was sitting one evening in his room, a dreadful storm arose without, and the rain streamed down from heaven. But the old poet sat warm and comfortable in his chimney corner, where the fire blazed and the roasting apple hissed. Those who have not a roof over their heads will be wetted to the skin, said the good old poet. Oh, let me in, let me in, I am cold, I am so wet, exclaimed suddenly a child that stood crying at the door and had been knocking for admittance while the rain poured down and the wind made all the windows rattle. Poor thing, said the old poet and he went to open the door. There stood a little boy, quite naked, and the water ran down from his long golden hair. He trembled with cold, and had he not come into the warm room, he would most certainly have perished in the frightful tempest. Poor child, said the old poet, as he took the boy by the hand, Come in, come in, and I will soon restore thee. Thou shalt have wine and roasted apples, for thou art verily a charming child. And the boy really was so. His eyes were like two bright stars. And although the water trickled down from his hair, it waved in beautiful curls. He looked exactly like an angel but he was so pale and his whole body trembled with the cold. He had a nice little bow in his hand, but it was quite spoiled by the rain and the tints of his many colored arrows ran one into the other. The old poet seated himself beside the hearth and he took the little fellow on his lap and he squeezed the water out of his dripping hair and he warmed his little hands between his own and he boiled for him some sweet wine. Then the boy recovered, and his cheeks again grew rosy, and he jumped down from the lap where he was sitting, and he danced all around the kind old poet. You are a merry fellow, said the old man. What is your name? My name is Cupid, answered the boy. Don't you know me? There lies my bow, and it shoots well, I can assure you. Look, the weather is now clearing up, and the moon is shining clear again through the windows. But your bow is quite spoiled, said the old poet. Yeah, that were sad indeed, said the boy, and he took the bow in his hand, and he examined it on every side. Oh, it is dry again, and it is not hurt at all. The string is quite tight. I will try it directly. And he bent his bow, and he took aim, and he shot an arrow at the old poet right into his heart. You see now that my bow was not spoiled, said he laughing, and away he ran. The naughty boy, to shoot the old poet this way, who had taken him into his warm room, who had treated him so kindly, and who had given him warm wine and the very best apples. The poor poet lay on the earth and wept, for the arrow had flown truly into his heart. Fie, said he, how naughty a boy Cupid is. I will tell all the children about him, 
that they may take care not to play with him, for he will only cause them sorrow and many a heartache. And all good children to whom he related this story took great heed of this naughty Cupid, and he made fools of them still, for he was astonishingly clever. When the university students came from the lectures, he runs beside them in a black coat with a book under his arm, and it is quite impossible for them to know it's him. And they walk along with him arm in arm, as if he too were a student like themselves. And then, unperceived, he thrusts an arrow into their bosom. When the young maidens come from being examined by the clergyman or go to the church to be confirmed, there he is again, close behind them. Yes, he is forever following people. At the play, he sits in the great chandelier and it burns and he burns in the bright flame so that people think that he really is a flame. But they soon discover it is something else. He roves about in the garden of the palace and upon the ramparts, yes, once he even shot your father and mother right in the heart. Ask them only and you will hear that they'll tell you. Oh, he is a naughty boy, that Cupid. You must never have anything to do with him. He is forever running after everybody. Only think, he shot an arrow once at your old grandmother. But that was a long time ago and it is all in the past now. However, a thing of that sort one never forgets. Fie, naughty Cupid, but now you know him and you know too how ill-behaved he is. The end. Thanks for joining me, and until next time, y'all be sweet.